Hey guys, welcome to our tutorial. Um, another way to add realism to a scene is by using motion blur. Now, motion blur is important when working with moving images because most photographic cameras can't take an exact still image. Let's say um, if you had to go outside right now and took a picture of a moving vehicle, you definitely wouldn't take an exact still image. You definitely have motion blur in your picture. And Maya can simulate that same effect using um, the uh, render settings. Now, to find that option, well, we just have to click on that bit, and you go, to, you find um, your render settings. Just go to your Maya software renderer, scroll down, you find an option called motion blur. Now, now um, with motion blur, if we had to activate motion blur, we have two options. We've got 2D and 3D. Let me just close this for now. Okay, I've got this B that's animated flying from left to right. Okay, this is how it's flying from left to right. It's not fully animated, but we'll, we'll get to that later. So it's flying from left to right, guys. Okay, now, um, just stop that. See, flying from left to right. It's, see? So, if we bring that around frame 45 and just go to us uh, <clears throat> render settings and um, like I said we've got two ways we've got two options we can either motion blur type 2d or type 3d let's go ahead and start with type 2d because um, that's the one on top so um, 2d if we had to blur type 2d just let's just go ahead and uh, blur this If we, if we go ahead and just blur this, you notice that um, Maya just blurs the pixels of your rendered image. As you can see, it's just blurring the pixels of your rendered image. But the, um, the advantage with this is that it renders really fast, but it doesn't catch certain types of animation. For example, um, for a bee that is moving from left to right, most of the blur is going to happen between left and right. So, um, if this was, because this bee was moving in a 3D space like up, down, left, right, and center, 2D motion blur might not catch that, and only 3D motion blur would. So, um, now 2D motion blur, let's, let's just close this. If we had to go up, if we had to go up, by the way, guys, I bought a Mac Pro, which is um, which has three set, uh, what, six sets of uh, dual core, so which is uh, twelve core, and uh, about sixteen gig RAM. It's a monster. So all this stuff will stop. All these um, hard to scroll down app will stop. It will get here in a few weeks from Apple. Anyway, if we had to try and imp improve the quality to, let's take it from pro uh, from custom to production quality. That way we get a better picture. And go ahead and render this. You will notice that um, it, it's looking a bit better and the motion blur is actually, uh, blur is getting blur, okay. Maya is blurring the alpha channel, okay? It's blur blurring the alpha channel, which is lo looking a bit better. Now, if I want to see this in an image, you need to smooth the color rather than... Um, if, if I want to make this look even better, we will need to smooth the color rather than the alpha. Because right now, Maya is just uh, smoothing the alpha channel, making it look better. So, let's just go ahead and uh, smooth the color than the alpha. So, uh, let's just go down. Right now we're smoothing the alpha. Let's go ahead and smooth the color. Color and just render it again. So um, we've actually smoothed the color. As you can see, my, it's uh, looking a bit a bit better. It's actually closer to uh, rendering a real 3D image. You see, it's it's a bit, it's it's better. So my um. My rule of thumb is sometimes it's better to use alpha. Okay, sometimes it's better to use to to um. Let me just move this 
to smooth the alpha than the color and sometimes better to, use, to smooth the color than the alpha. Let me show you, let me just tell you the difference. Well, when we're trying to blur a composite scene, it's better to use the alpha, to, to, to use the smooth alpha. But when trying to blur, uh, when trying to blur out of a camera, when trying to blur a render out of a camera, it's better to use the color. So it's just a simple rule, okay? Now, um, on top, because we use it, we're trying to um, make a 2D image blur out, make it look real, um, we have, there's a lot of things we have to fake, okay? There's a lot of things we have to, to fake. Right, and um, on to, in addition with um, that 2D option, we've got blur by frame, okay? This one will be in 3D as well, we blur by frame. Right now, we blur frame one, blur length is one frame, okay? And one option that you need to know is the use of shutter open and close. Now, this one is in 3D as well. Now, um, shutter open and close simulates the real life shutter open and close in the real life camera. Okay, this just simulates it. Now, if we, we can um, uh, shutter open, open at uh, 50% and close at 50 or 25%. Okay, let's, let me show you what, what, what that is. So, um, 50% and close at 50.5. Uh, you just render it. See how it looks, it's so fuzzy. Now, let's go to um, 2.5. 2.5 and close at 2.5. And go ahead and uh, just render this. It looks less fuzzy. So the more you add, the more you add, the more fuzzy. The less you add, just play with it. It will make more sense. Um, <clears throat> so that's um, the shutter. Uh, what else? What else do you need to to know? Blur sharpness. Blur sharpness is uh, you can blur it to a certain degree. Then you add the sharp. The sharp. If you want it to look more sharp or less sharp, that's uh, pretty much what it is. Play with that one as well. Now smooth value. This is uh, pretty much um, the um, the degree of your blurness. Okay, right now it's on two. If we want to increase the degree of our blurness in our in our scene, of if we want to increase the degree of our um, motion blur, we just have to increase this to four. It will double the degree. Uh, whatever eight, you do, you do quadruple the degree. That's just how it is. Now that's two D motion blur. If we had actually said, okay, 2D motion blur, we've worked with it, we're happy with it, now we've got a 3D, we want to blur a 3D, more, we want to blur a 3D image. So let's just click on 3D, you'll notice that we only have two options, which is use shutter open and close, and the blur by frame, which is blur by frame one, or you can say, okay, blur by frame six onwards, this frame, frame five, so it's, it's up to you really. So that's exactly how this works, and um, uh, yeah, let's 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 go ahead and uh, just render this. Um, if we go ahead and render this, you notice that we, we didn't have to work, we didn't have to do much, and the, the 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 image is just like perfect, just crispy clear, as you can see, just nice. And um, yeah, that's a uh, motion blur for you guys. So. I hope you like the tutorial and usually when I, whenever I'm working I don't mess around with all these settings because there's no need. I, I'll, I'll probably have, I'll have to, tweak, to tweak a little bit here and there like the open and close, put it on 5, put it on 5, that one 5, that works for me. Just go ahead and render it. I don't mess around with this, with, with this um, like too much you know, I just put it on um, shut up, shut up five, close five, and it will render pretty good. As you can see, it's so blur. We've increased the the blurness. So, yep, that's how I do it. Like I said, put it on three. If you're rendering in three D, put it on three D. Five, uh, fifty percent, fifty percent, fifty percent open, fifty percent close, and just leave it there, and you'll be happy with your um, results all the time.